Hi, everybody. My name is Danica Jones, and with my lovely co-host, Wendy Perry, and you are watching Custody Matters Live. So today's, tonight's, we have an, an amazing special guest who's going to be a speaker in a conference in Houston, although, and I'm going to have my fellow Texan share who we have as our guest today. All right. Well, tonight we've got such a great guest. I'm really excited um, that tonight's guest is Dwileen Lindsay. And let me tell you a little bit about Dwileen. Dwileen is a lifelong Houstonian. She's from Houston, and she is the founder of Children for Tomorrow, uh, which is a nonprofit in Houston. Children for Tomorrow was started in 2009. Dwileen has a Bachelor of Business Administration degree and many honors. She also has a certificate, woo, a certificate <laughs> certification in leadership, there we go, and is trained and certified as an expert in attachment-based parental alienation through the Childress Institute. She is a member of Houston's First Baptist Church, and she has been a part of the Houston Police Department's Youth Police Advisory Council. She has had a big part in the writing of the curriculums for Children for Tomorrow's programs, such as LEAP, and Leap E and Leap Junior, and we're going to ask her about those programs. She'll tell us what those are. She has researched and studied the pathology of psychological emotional child abuse, high conflict custody divorce, and pathogenic parenting, ABPA, attachment based parental alienation. And in 2018, Children for Tomorrow started the first pilot program in Houston, Texas to assess, diagnose, and treat families of psychological child abuse, parental alienation. We're going to talk more about that as well. Very, very important work. Um, she also started the first parental alienation support group in Houston, Texas in 2017 for targeted parents of parental alienation. And uh, she's just done many, many things. Um, she's worked with minority uh, women in business. She's worked um, with various organizations in Houston. Uh, she's worked as, a, as an advisor for a, a school district. And in 2017, she received the 2017 Leadership Award for the Rising Star Nonprofit and Guiding Star Award from parents of public schools. Actually, this was in 2013, 14, 15, 17, and 18. Um, and Wileen has done many television and radio interviews regarding uh, parental alienation and uh, the work that Children for Tomorrow does. Uh, Dwileen has been blessed with three grown children and seven grandchildren. And uh, Dwileen and I became acquainted um, when she attended the Parental Alienation Symposium in Dallas, Texas in 2017. And then after the symposium in Dallas, um, she partnered up with Jaina Haney, who we had on as a guest a few weeks ago, and Dwileen and Jaina Haney and Dr. Craig Childress. That's when they started the ABPA pilot program. And uh, I can just tell you, uh, I've known Dwileen for a few years, and she's one of the kindest nicest people on the planet it's, it's really true you're just you're just such a really special person you do all this really hard work important work really groundbreaking work um, but you're also really one of the sweetest people uh, that I've ever known so thank you so much and one of the reasons that we wanted to talk to you tonight Dwileen is um, children for tomorrow is actually going to be hosting um, a big conference in October October 18 2019 the Revealing Unseen Child Abuse a Symposium, and the keynote speaker is Dr. Jennifer Harmon. And so we want to talk with you about that as well as all of these other things. So, phew, that's a lot. That is. I'm worn out. <laughs> well, so tell me, tell me, Dwileen, um, Children for Tomorrow, you, you started it in 2009. Tell us a little bit about, like, what had you create Children for Tomorrow? Well, um, I was um, close to four little children. That's where the four comes from. And they, I was seeing emotional abuse from these children, but I didn't know what to do about it. And I didn't want to get angry about it. So I 
said, I'm going to do something about it. If I don't help these kids, I'm going to help some other kids. So that's how Children for Tomorrow came about. Um, long story short, uh, it, it has gone through a lot of different channels, I guess you would say, because I thought it was emotional child abuse. I later find out it is psychological child abuse, which some people call parental alienation. So I had a, a journey to go to get to there. But since then, we have helped so many people uh, understand what child, you know, psychological child abuse is, because a lot of people don't recognize that emotional abuse is worse than any of the, the abuses because you have to have emotional abuse before you have physical or sexual abuse. And I didn't know either at the time uh, that emotional abuse or psychological child abuse was against the law. It was just like psychological, I mean, uh, physical or sexual abuse. So, you know, a, a lot of things came out of that and I've learned so much since then. And um, this is why we have a program to help people mm -hmm. understand about it. Well, you know, you've created, you've gotten into the schools, which is like, yeah. it was huge because that's, of course, all of our kids go to school. And, and of course, um, so tell us a little bit about how it is that you got in the schools and a little bit about like the curriculum and who it serves. Well, we have a, a, a program. Our first program was the LEAP program. It's learning about emotional abuse. Um, and uh, those people that came into those classes were from the courts. The judges mandated the uh, uh, litigants or the attorneys would uh, ask them to come. And so when we got in there, we had some teachers in there. And one thing that stood out to me was a teacher was in there and he had taken almost eight hours of the class. And he finally, he said, you know, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm abusing my children, my own personal children, but I feel like I'm a, a coach and I think I'm abusing my, the, the kids on the football team. <laughs> and so I thought, wow, that's pretty amazing that he, you know, started recognizing that. And we started having more and more of those kind of comments in our classes. And I said, you know, these people need to have, you know, some education on, you know, emotional abuse. And then with the parental alienation, I have a lot of people that come in and say, the schools, they just collude with the, you know, the unhealthy parent. And I said, you know, I'm just going to put it all in here. We're going to educate these teachers and uh, these administrators, and we're going to let them know that this is going on and it's an epidemic. <laughs> mm. So that's how we got into the educational part. You know, that's, that's really huge because truly, you know, teachers, principals, they're the gatekeepers. Um, they are, they're the ones that get to choose to, to uh, create fairness and equity uh, for the best interest of the child, giving, giving both parents equal access, whether, whether you um, are more fond of one or the other doesn't mean that you can't treat them both equally. Uh, but yet, being a teacher myself, your, your heart's involved. You're kind of like a professional parent. So of course your heart is involved in, uh, for the children. So uh, sometimes when your heart's involved, you're not able to be as um, equal yeah. in the way that you treat the parents, unless you've been trained. Right, and, and these teachers, um, they just see a loving, they see a loving bonded parent, but mm -hmm. we don't see that. We see that that loving bonding parent is truly not that parent and this crazy you know chaotic parent is the one that's the healthy parent they're just frustrated because they can't get into the schools to learn what the, what's happening with their children or getting their grades or finding out you know what's going on with the children in their lives at school so you know that's that's what I was you know so aggravated about <laughs> well yeah they, I mean th think about it if you are you're the one that's kind of getting the short end of the stick, you've got a more charismatic co-parent that's in the schools developing alliances with the teachers and the principals and stuff like that. And you walk in and you're like, I want to be treated fairly. You're going to be mad and, up and upset. And of course, you're going to be perceived by the staff as, oh, they're the angry one. They're the one that we don't want to deal with. Yeah, that's that. just 
had so many people call me and say, how can you help us get into the schools? Can you do something for the schools? I mean, like I would get this like <laughs> weekly for these parents to start calling. And, and once we launched the pilot program, I was getting calls from all over the place, you know, people out of state and I'm going, how can I help these people out of state, you know? So yeah, it was, it was, you know, I had to, nights that I didn't sleep because I was thinking, how can I help? How can I help? How can I help? So. Right. I um, I have started giving uh, presentations and trainings to schools as well. And something that I teach the teachers and the school counselors and administrators is, here are some things that you might see or that you might perceive about this parent and what you perceive might or might not be true. And I talk about that with the alienating parent and the uh, targeted parent and also the child. So I go through each person in the family. This is what you might see in this one. This is what you might see in this one. This is what you might see in the child. Um, and then talk about the importance of uh, being a neutral zone where uh, the kids can receive the love and support of both of their parents. But, you know, teachers are our people, and they just think we know how easily people can be manipulated by a, a skilled alienator, and, and teachers um, can be manipulated by them as well. So it's, it's really, really important that we do get into the schools and teach them about the signs um, and to teach them about some things that they might perceive um, that they might think might not really be true because as you were saying you know you've got an alienating parent off, often who is um, cool collected charming convincing and they seem like the perfect parent and they're telling the teacher well the other parent you know they're crazy and then the other parent comes in and they're frantic because um, they're trying to be involved in their child's life and they're getting pushed out and so then it's like, oh, yeah, see, she, you know, that parent is kind of crazy. So it's, it's really important for us to educate them about um, the real signs of, of what's really happening and to be um, a neutral zone and to base their decisions on, on documentation when there's a question, right? To always be, um, to always um, treat both parents equally, like Danica said, be a neutral zone treat both parents equally unless you have documentation that directs you otherwise. Um, and what is Leap Junior? I wanted to ask you about Leap Junior because that the name of it sounds like that is specifically for children. It is. It's a, well, what we found out, we do counseling. When we first started Children for Tomorrow, we, um, we just did one-on-one -on -one counseling for children and we paid for that and we helped with amicus attorney, you know, the fees for those. And we recognize that, you know, that's how we went into LEAP. We recognize that the children, if they go into counseling by themselves and their parents aren't going into counseling, then you're not healing or fixing the problem. But we also recognize, too, when you have a, an adult and a child, sometimes uh, they don't get everything out of the child that they need. So if they're put in uh, their peers, uh, like a group of their peers, they'll start talking among themselves because they feel like that nobody is in this situation but them. So in this class, um, they learn that they are not alone, and they also learn how to help their peers too, because by talking, each uh, child gets to say, oh yeah, I recognize that in my house, and oh yeah, I recognize this in my house, and so it really helps the kids open up a lot more. And so we do this in uh, class settings of three different age levels so we don't put you know all the class kids together mm -hmm. and there's three different classes of the kids at three different age levels and um, it works out really good that way well that's really great I mean kids really need a place that they feel safe to to talk about these issues because especially if they're dealing with parental alienation you know they can't really freely talk about that at home because you know that is you know, contrary to parental alienation, right? I mean, you can't, the kids can't talk about that freely. So that's really, really great. Cautious too in the class, they're very cautious. They're always looking around and, and, you know, being very cautious about what they say because they don't trust. Most of those kids don't trust because they have to act uh, a certain way at moms and in another way at dads or 
you know, so they don't trust people. <laughs> it's really, uh, it's really sad that, you know, that they have, it has to be that way. Yeah. So, it, yeah. it is sad, but you know, again, those are signs of parental alienation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. So it's, um, these programs are offered in the schools. Is that right? No, the only uh, program that we offer in the school is the LEAP E for educators, but the LEAP is here in our office and the uh, LEAP Junior is here in our office. So okay. we have classrooms here in our office. Uh, so we hold those, you know, and sometimes I'll do, um, like I work with the YPAC, with the Houston Police, um, the kids, they work with and sometimes I'll do like presentations for those people that I'll go to their facility and do that but that's you know not not very many uh, times do I do that either. Well so, so how would somebody get this into the programs like if I wanted to go to my school district um, uh, what where what the, what's the path what's the path to be able to um, provide this? Our instructors, so our instructors, this is how we operate. We, uh, the instructors go and they're kind of like our sales rep, is, if you want to say that. And they get the, uh, the class, you know, the, the school to, or they usually go to the principals. The principals are usually the ones that can, uh, that oversee and they get the money to, um, to put on these presentations because what we do is we give them their credit, their uh, accreditation. So we're accredited with the uh, TEA, Texas Education Association. So they get their accredited hours through us. So we go to each school, like individual, like the elementary school or the junior high or the high school. And we, you know, tell them what we do. And most right now the mental, mental health is a big deal trauma is a big deal and so they're wanting to uh, get these presentations out because they they're required to have so many hours in each one of these areas and you're talking about the the, the teachers or the, the mental teachers. health counselors the, the counselors we do the, the counselors the teachers um and the administrators uh, you know that work in the office they even get that too because a lot of those people that work in the front office they have to deal with some of these um conflicts that come in there with these parents you know like the targeted parent you know trying to see you know get what they want to get for their child and then you have the alienating parent that says no you can't come in here well we can tell them both parents have unless it's stipulated on their um divorce decree both parents have the rights to know about their children and so we try to educate we try to educate everybody <laughs> well and, and when i um when i contact a school or a school district and i uh, you know suggest that they should have presentations on this i let them know that if they will educate their employees about this, then that will really benefit the school. They'll be able to um, operate more smoothly and stick to the business of, of educating the kids, which is what they want to do. They don't want to spend their time dealing with these issues, but they don't know how to deal with the issues, so they waste a lot of time and a lot of resources when they have these high conflict um, families come in, you know, parents who are trying to erase each other off the emergency contact cards all the time and trying to get one off the email list and trying to, you know, take one off, you know, uh, the records and all, you know, how they go back and forth, back and forth, one's erasing one, and then they're trying to put themselves back on. But it, when schools are um, trained and they know how to deal with this, then it really saves them a lot of time and resources on their end, on the school end, so they can operate better and more efficiently and they can stick to the business of educating the kids. So I think it's really important that we let schools know that um, they need this, you know, to, to operate better, to better serve um, their employees, better serve their students, uh, to learn how to handle these situations and resolve them, uh, you know, properly. Yeah, well, and a lot of them don't, they have no clue of what to do. I mean, they see this going on, but they have no clue of what, how do I handle this? So, yeah.
Yeah. So I, I would oh. like, if there's someone, a, uh, a teacher who wants to bring it to their school district or a school, um, how would they go about bringing your, your program to, uh, to, to a professional development kind of uh, forum? They can, um, they can contact our office um, and we can, you know, help them from there if they want or, you know, right now we're working on a new website, so we don't have it on our website yet, <laughs> but, but we're working behind the scenes for that right now, so uh, it will soon be up on our website. So tell us about the ABPA pilot program, because I know a lot of people watching have got questions about it. So tell us about the attachment-based parental alienation pilot program in Houston, Texas, because people want to know about it. And uh, so tell us about that. I am so excited. I can't even tell you how excited I am about this. This is my baby, I call it. <laughs> we, um, we have some... Um, parents that are in the program right now and so I'm very very encouraged by it uh, we have had people we've had uh, in fact last week we just had a family that just went totally through it we got their reports we're meeting with the amicus attorney on Friday of this week so um, we'll see how how this family goes but I have just been very impressed uh, we've had to learn a lot with the program because as you know uh, when you have a alienated parent, they they like to uh, push back, mm -hmm. and then you have your attorneys that are trying to push back too. So there's a lot of uh, getting them in the program has been very difficult, <laughs> should I say? Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's working, and I've been real impressed with our um, mental health professionals. Uh, we have. Uh, we have teamed up two people that do the assessment and then they meet um, with um, Jaina and the team and they go over, you know, each uh, of the, the families and um, discuss. Um, so we have really, I mean, like it's really going good and I'm excited. In fact, tomorrow I have to go to the courts to, what I do is I go to the courts to be kind of like, the expert for the program because it's so new and these attorneys don't even know how to present it even so we're learning we're tweaking as we go because it's a pilot program but um i go to answer any questions that the judge might need to you know have answered or if one of the attorneys um uh, have you know questions i can mm -hmm. answer it and it's funny because usually the opposing uh, attorney well they're always against it you know but they would always say, but I do have a client that I can use for that program. So, you know, when we're in the courts, they're recognizing that this might be a, a solution. And so they're asking more and more questions about it. So um, I'm, I'm very excited. It's so is the ABPA pilot program, uh, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you would say collaborative, but it seems to me like it's kind of a collaborative thing where we're, um, you work with mental health professionals, um, and I know you said a moment ago an amicus attorney on a case, um, and the attorneys. And so it's really you're not um, representing or favoring one side. No. You're going. This pilot program is to go in and to assess the situation with mental health professionals, mm -hmm. such as Jana Haney, who we had on the show a few weeks ago. So it, it's a partnership with everybody that's involved in, in these cases. Is that correct? That's correct. So when they, so when the, the family come, they come in and we do the assessment and, you know, this is the thing. We're not saying that every family comes in will be, uh, you know, they will have any kind of cutoff or alienation. Uh, some, some cases will have to say, you know what, we can't take you, but this is pathogenic parenting. And so this is what you can do if you want to. We have some mental health professionals that we can, you know, recommend to you or, you know, you can find your own. Now, once they're in the program, they're, they're with our mental health. But what happens is we, we let uh, two of our mental health professionals do the assessment. Once we get the report from them, we take those people, we report, we meet with the amicus attorney and we go over the report because we want to be transparent mm -hmm. with everyone with all the findings and so um they will 
the amicus attorney will re take it to the court and he will file it with the courts because we have so many days to file it with the courts. And then uh, the, the uh, parents and, or the family, they go into the treatment program. So uh, we trained last year uh, 20 mental health professionals and 17 uh, legal professionals. Wow, that's that are awesome. That are amicus. And we have a, li we have a uh, the court orders. And so we try to help um, the attorneys present it to the courts. We have one attorney that is kind of like, he's our lead attorney and he kind of knows the process. So he helps also with the process of getting it to the court. And uh, on the, um, the orders, we have all of our trained uh, legal professionals and they can pick from those legal professionals. Now the ABPA pilot program is, I believe, having its one year anniversary or just had its one year anniversary, is that right? Well, it will, uh, well, yeah, it is kind of, we had a problem because we had relationships with all the attorneys I mean, all the judges that were on the bench, and now we have new judges on the bench. So we're having mm -hmm. to go back and do a totally, just form relationships with these new uh, judges. So that's kind of delayed the program a little bit, probably maybe six months. But we did the training a year ago uh, in April of last year. So what kind of a, of a feedback are you getting from judges and amicus attorneys? Are, are they... Are they on board with this? Because it seems to me like they would really be in favor of this uh, of this program. Yeah, the judges have been very open. We were very, uh, the ones, we haven't spoken to all of them, but the word's getting out. So, uh, but the people that, the, the judges that we have spoken with, they are very open. I mean, we have one judge and he, he always says, I am ready to explore this because, mm -hmm. you know, they have had the same old thing in the, in these courts and getting the same results. And this is something new. I mean, some of them are, you know, reluctant a little bit. They want to know all the details and stuff, but, but, you know, it's another, it's another way to go because if all the other ways are not, you know, helping any, like the people, the, what happens is the litigants keep coming back to court, coming back to court, coming back to court. Well, this kind of stops all that coming back to court until they are finished with the program. And hopefully it will help uh, the child be out of the middle. So our mental health professionals take that middle piece for the child. And then we have mental health professionals working with each parent. So you're, you know, you have, you have a lot of people working together to heal these, the mental, I call them mental ill parents, mm -hmm. uh, but to heal those parents. And we've noticed one thing, we have to be very gentle with those parents. At first, you know, I just wanted to go in there and go, ah, you bad parent, you know, but you <laughs> can't because, you know, those parents have, this is from their trauma in their childhood. So you have to have mm -hmm. compassion and understanding with them and you have to be gentle with them. And I have found out, I have gotten some parents that I thought would not come through our class because when we when before they're even assessed they have to start coming through our leap class because we it kind of teaches them a lot of stuff about themselves in our leap class and so um when they come through our leap class we have to be very gentle with them there mm -hmm. and then that makes them want to go on into the assessment so it's been like i thought we would have a, a hard time getting them there and we haven't so i've been like okay you know, uh, of course, you know, I pray a lot and I feel like God's hands is involved in this program. So, <laughs> well, you know, when, when I did your introduction, I said, you're one of the kindest people that I know. And I think that is a great example of what I'm talking about that, that I haven't heard anybody else in all my years say that you should treat alienating parents, the alienators, uh, gently and kindly and that's what you're saying and yeah. and you're saying that that works though you know and and of course I mean I think we're all more responsive to that right we're all more responsive to to somebody showing that they really they care about us so Twilene well, I mean, you're just awesome <laughs> <laughs> you. I mean but you know it, it just at first I didn't I wanted to be real harsh and say you you know you do this and you mm -hmm. do that but I, you know I, I I had to change my way of thinking because like my grandma always used to tell me, she said, kill him with kindness. You know, you get a lot yeah. far 
the, you know, with your sweetness than you can with the bitterness, you know. And and I know this for a fact that these people that are high conflict, they have to know that they're in control. And another way that some of these people get them in there is they're always saying that the the targeted parent is the bad parent. And we'll say, okay, well, let's prove that. Let's get them assessed and make sure that these, these, these parents are this bad person. So they want to go in it to prove a point. You know, they're always wanting to say, point the finger and that's the bad person. <laughs> so that's another, you know, I guess it's reverse psychology. Uh, but that's another way that some of these parents come in there too. So, wow. You know, well, so, um, I'm so excited about the Revealing Unseen Child Abuse Symposium hosted by Children for Tomorrow. And like I said earlier, it's October 18th, 2019. And so tell us, tell us anything you want to share about it. It's just, I'm really excited about it because Dr. Jennifer Harmon is the keynote speaker and she's amazing. And there's a lot of great presenters um, and also very generous continuing education units for a lot of professionals. So, so tell us, about this upcoming symposium and and why people need to come to it. <laughs> well, it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of a variety of things because I was thinking you know when we decided to do it I wanted to have like a lot of different avenues like I want people to be able to learn about the different personality disorders so that's when we asked Dr. Um, Fox to come in and and he is so, oh you're gonna love him. He is so good and he's very gentle. And then we have you. And um, so we're excited about that too. And Jennifer, Dr. Harmon, she is so awesome. And I mean, she really, with all some of her research that she's been doing lately, it's just, mm -hmm. I am just so impressed with her. She's right down my alley with this. <laughs> and uh, then we'll have Jaina. And Jaina will talk a lot more about the pilot program because she's more involved in it than I am because she works directly with the mental health professionals and uh, <clears throat> she will be uh, in there and then we have a judge that's in there that um, I have a had a really good relationship with in fact she's probably the reason that we have the LEAP program she's helped so much with that program and she understands alienation like so good and she's just done lots of good things for different people out there not the people that don't like her or the people that you know didn't get what they wanted from her but <laughs> <laughs> so um and then we have um who else do we have i think that's, that's we've it. got uh luke gunstacks oh yeah yeah luke yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a family law attorney here in Texas, and he um, has a lot of high conflict cases. Um, but uh, my husband and I interviewed him for a documentary that we're making, and he shared with us his uh, strategy when he goes into court to show parental alienation, and it's I think it's pretty genius. Um, and he's one of those attorneys who he really, really cares about this issue. He cares about families. Um, so I'm really excited that um, people will get to hear him speak because I don't, he, we had a parental alienation think tank in Dallas, I want to say three years ago. And he just informally stood up and said a few words. It wasn't, it wasn't planned, but he's really, really great. And now people are really going to have an opportunity to go and hear him actually present. And then also um, at the symposium, um, Rod McCall is going to be speaking, yeah. sharing his, his story about his son, Eric, which is if, if, wow. if people have not heard Rod, um, they really need to come and hear Rod tell Eric's story. Yes, because very important. Uh, we had him last year um, come and speak, and I mean, there was not a dry eye in the place. Mm -mm. And yeah, I wanna, I wanna close off with him because he is just. That's where people need to go. Wow, this is what it is. That's what you know. My thing with this um, alienation is. People don't understand it. And, and this is another thing. When people call my office, I have grown men that cry because I'll tell them, I understand. I truly believe what you're saying. And they will cry, you know, 
I mean, people no. just don't understand. And I really think that that's where we need to get awareness out. And then once you have awareness, you can educate these people. But I mean, there's a lot of people, if you're not touched by it, like, I know you have this saying that I love, you know, but if you're not touched by it, then guess what? You don't understand it. And, and that's true. That's yeah. right. I, I've seen that a lot in my support group meetings where people will come and uh, at their first meeting, they will just sit there and cry and just, they're just overwhelmed because it's the first time they've been in a room with people who understand what they're going through and who believe what they say. And, and they'll just say, I've never been around people who understand what yeah. I'm going through and believe me. And it's just a, a release uh, of emotion. So yeah, and Rod's story is very, very important. So I'm. Um, thank you so much for putting together this symposium. And I hope that a lot of people will watch this interview and say, "Hey, I want to go and meet Dwyleen and and hear Dr. Harmon." And it's it's going to be a really, really good program. And Dwyleen, I want to say um, kudos to you um, and your partner Renee, because you do have a partner at Children for Tomorrow. Her name is Renee. Her um, dad. <laughs> he would have been here but he's hmm. he, they put him in a hospital yesterday so. oh but you, yeah. but you ladies have put together um a really um diverse program for the symposium and i think that's something that's really great is like you said you know you've got a family court judge you've got an attorney you've got um dr daniel fox is a personality disorder specialist yeah. we need to and talk he, about that so it's just yeah. it's such a diverse program and a lot of um presenters that people have not had a chance to see before so I'm, I'm really excited and thankful for you putting this together I did thank you thank you for being a guest on our show today um, this is this is exciting I'm excited about the some, the um, October the um, revealing unseen child abuse mm -hmm. um, excited about that and so, and I was talking to Wendy before we went on the air about the possibility of us actually being there and taking the custody matters live and doing specials at the conferences and interviewing oh, people. You can come to uh, our <laughs> yeah, interviewing people at the conferences. So, um, <clears throat> so if you're hearing this and you do have a conference that you might want to have Wendy or I or or the both of us to attend and, and to do interviews with your, uh, your workshop leaders and keynote speakers, just uh, let us know, just private message us, and uh, we would be, be happy to consider that uh, in our calendar. That would be great. All right, that's another week of Custody Matters Live. Uh, can't wait to see you again next week, and have a great weekend. Thank you.